What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on the channel. Today, we're going to be covering what I think would happen if Izuku had a video game quirk, aka solo leveling. Now, today's thumbnail art was made by the legend Ikari on Insta and the thumbnail by Emmett. Their links will be down below. Now, this is going to be having a like, okay? Some light, none too crazy, just a smile, little 1k. And when we hit that, I'll drop the next part. So just show me that you guys want more, and trust me, I'll deliver. That said, enjoy. Hey, Ross, sauce it up. Before starting this video, I just have to say, I have had to stop and start this recording three times because a mosquito was bothering me, but I'm happy to say and announce, I got that little boy. Anyways though, starting this video off, there's a lot of ways that I realistically could have done this story. I could have obviously started off with Izuku probably, you know, just getting the thing as a kid and then just becoming really, really OP by the end of the story, but I figured that for this one in particular, I would actually like to pace myself a bit. And so I decided to go with a route that was more on the entertaining side rather than what would realistically happen. So here's my take on what if Deku had solo leveling. Um, okay, so obviously to make everything a little interesting, I wanted to start off with Izuku as a kid. Now, obviously, the quirklessness and stuff like that is still going to be a factor. Izuku is still going to be a quirkless kid, and he's still going to get bullied, and, you know, he's still not going to be fitting in very well, right? However, this time, when Izuku is at around the age of 11 years old, 11 years old, let's go 11 years old, right? Izuku will be so, 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 so tired of ruthlessly getting bullied, Bakugo looking down on him, and ultimately everybody thinking that he's lesser than them just because of the fact that he's quirkless. And so, Izuku would decide that he can become a hero. No matter what anybody says, Izuku can do it and he will do it. He'll be the first quirkless hero. So, he starts working out, he basically starts working out on martial arts and stuff like that, and so Izuku will get to a point where he's actually very, very strong, like I can't sugarcoat it, but Izuku's actually going to be up there when it comes to how powerful he is. And when I say that, I mean when quirkless people, <laughs> because he's not going to be up there when it comes to anybody with a quirk, realistically speaking. We're talking about a kid here, not a full grown adult with his full potential or years of martial art experience. Izuku's going to know the very, very basics, like the basics of boxing, the basics of wrestling, and that's about it. But he is going to be a little bit of a gym rat, just because I figured that doing that for Izuku would set him up perfectly for when he actually does get the ability of solo leveling or the video game quirk that he's going to be getting someday. And the way that that's all going to be happening is that I think that a good place to start the story off would be the day that the middle school teacher enters the classroom and starts spewing nonsense about random things, right? Now, the reason for this is because of two things, and you guys are going to be finding those out later. But for now, let's start off. So obviously the teacher comes in, you know, he tells everybody that he has papers and that they need to write down what they want to do. You know, the quirk aptitude test. Everybody just starts being like, ah, oh, really? And he's like, just kidding. You know, like, I don't know. You all want to become heroes. You know what I mean? All that shit. And afterwards, you know, he basically reads off the name Izuku Midoriya for UA. Just like in the original, Bakugo goes off and he gets very, very, very angry with Izuku. He doesn't like it one bit that Izuku's trying to become a hero and and he would make that very obvious. He blows up Deku's desk, sends him flying off of it and goes on to pretty much belittle him. Izuku gets up and stares at him like he wants to fight back and Bakugo just says, what, you want a piece? But finally, for the first time, the teacher would say, sit down Bakugo and Bakugo would pout to do so before then screaming off at the teacher and the teacher shaking his head saying, you're lucky you're going to be a hero someday. Deku gets up, gets his stuff and finally sits down at the desk. And when class finally ends and the teacher's gone and Izuku's packing his stuff, Izuku would be sitting there and Bakugo and his goonies would end up entering the classroom. Now, 
Bakugo notices that Izuku has some sort of notebook in his desk, and Izuku would have obviously written notes from the hero encounter that he had this morning. Now, he wrote notes about Kamui Woods and all that stuff, and Bakugo snatches it right out of Izuku's hands, going on to say that he's such a loser. Who writes quirk quirk assessments like this is the lamest thing ever izuku would just be like bakugo come on just give it back like do we really have to do this today like it's been years since you've bullied me can you just leave me alone i'll get out of your way and bakugo goes nah you know i left you alone because i figured that you thought that you could not become a hero you stopped talking about it but now come to find out you want to ruin my dream you want to come to the same school as me and you know what i don't like that i thought that it would be a lot cooler if it was known that Bakugo Katsuki came from this crappy school and still became the number one hero. Got that? And I can't do that if somebody else does it too. Blows up the notebook and tosses it out into the little pond with fishes, right? Now Izuku looks at Bakugo and says, Bakugo, I'm tired of you. From here, going on to throw a, a, a right hook at Bakugo, who quickly dodges it, smirks and says, looks like you finally grew a pair, before kneeing Deku in the stomach, and then both of his goons would grab onto Izuku, before then saying, Bakugo, get him. And Bakugo is like, <laughs> seriously? Let him go. I want this chump to myself. For Izuku rushes in and tries to throw a punch at, his, at Bakugo, which would be a fake out. Bakugo takes it and then throws a throw a, 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 a heavy right, right? But Izuku, knowing that that's how Bakugo fights, catches it and slams him on the ground, saying, I know you always fight with the right hook. And Bakugo gets up um, before, you know, like, like wiping off some of the spit that he had on his face and saying, <laughs> you know, Deku, I was going to let you off easy. But now, you're dead, before rushing in and punching and punching and punching and punching at Izuku. Izuku would be getting clobbered like never before, and it would not be very good. Izuku, basically after the beating that Bakugo would give him, would be looking like Vegeta after he just gets stomped by literally every character. His shirt would be ripped, he's holding his right arm, and he's looking at Bakugo as he's like, anymore? And Bakugo notices that Izuku's about to faint, and he's like, <laughs> Deku, if I did any more, I might not become a hero. Why don't you just take a swan dive off the roof? Maybe then you'll actually have a quirk in your next life. And Deku looks at Bakugo gritting his teeth, Bakugo shooting an explosion from his hand, and Izuku just looking down. Bakugo spitting on Deku and saying, that's what I thought. Before Deku would be left in the classroom, and he would just kind of go to the wall before kind of like falling on it and sliding down on the wall, just thinking to himself that, his dream, it was just crushed in front of him so easily. Bakugo's not even a villain. Of course, Bakugo's strong, but he hasn't even gone to hero training. And he cleaned him up even though Izuku knows the ins and outs of his quirk. And Izuku's been training all this long. Was, was all of that for nothing? Izuku would think. And that feeling of just like, did I really just waste my entire life? Would kick in. Izuku would feel for the first time just this feeling of just depression and worthlessness and finally those feelings that he had been repressing for so long of feeling useless because he's quirkless would come back full throttle. These thoughts would go through his mind like crazy and Izuku would make his way towards the roof realizing that he can't even beat a middle school quirk user. How is he going to become a hero? And he decides to commit seppuku. Just like Bakugo said, Izuku looks down at the ground and he jumps. No words, nothing. The instant regret would immediately hit him, but he can't do anything now. And now, Izuku can feel his body free falling when suddenly, it's like time stops. Izuku would have an option menu in front of him. As he would see his name, he would see his health, it would be pretty low, and he would see that there's an option for start. Izuku would be asked by this video game quirk-like system if he would want to start. And Izuku would be like, why? But the system would just be like, you can either die now or you can accept this. I'm your quirk. Looks like, looks like I activated when you were one second away from death. And Izuku seeing this would be like, start pressing the button before everything lights green and his eyes go green for a split second. But the next second that we cut to the screen, we would see Zuku on his bed, completely healed from his injuries from Bakugo. And he would be at school the very next day. 
However, in the morning when he was brushing his teeth, something interesting happened. Izuku was getting bothered by the top icon that would show level 1, and he would see that his XP had gone up from the moment that he woke up. Realizing this, Izuku would ask what in the world this is, and it would almost be as if AI, like his quirk, could actually talk back to him. It would say that this is your experience, that it's only going to explain this once, so, so pay attention. It would then tell him that he basically has stats, that he can upgrade himself with the XP, that he can also go into mob dungeons and all that stuff and get levels, and that just by doing daily missions and tasks such as working out and like, you know, like doing different things, he could basically gain experience. By literally doing simple chores, he could gain experience. Not a lot, but experience nonetheless and izuku seeing this would be very very shocked and the stats go as follows he could change the speed strength intelligence agility and durability and he also has the option of special abilities which is something i'll cover in a bit but izuku noticing that he has about 10 points that he can add to each category his speed let's say that it's currently here let's adjust this together considering that i didn't put it his speed since he's like a basic human we're gonna put that at 10 we're gonna put his strength at like 13 we're gonna put his intelligence he's a pretty smart guy we're gonna put his intelligence at a cool 25 his agility we're gonna put that as a 12 and his durability we're gonna put that at a 15 just because he's been getting beat on by bakugo and he's been training his whole time so let's just keep that there by the way my bad for not putting in these stats earlier it's just that i forgot that he would definitely have some sort of stats like just because you know he's obviously not infant he has to have something so yeah these are his basic stats for now and normally the normal quirkless human has stats of just 10 10 10 10 or actually speed would be more like 7 strength would be like 8 you know like like basically it'd be under 10 um and 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 and, and like 10 would be like their max you know obviously most people are not dumb so their intelligence would be like at 15 but you guys get the point point being he has decent stats now, noticing that he has like 20 levels that he could put into any stat, Izuku would think to himself that, what does he need? He would think to himself he could probably use speed, but what good would that do him if he has no strength? So, Izuku decides, you know what, I'm just going to add speed and strength. And so, he would add 10 points to his speed, changing that to 20, and 10 points to his strength, changing that to 23. Now, Izuku has 0 points left. But he notices that he has a small quest that he can do to earn himself two experience points. And he does so. He takes a morning jog and then he eats breakfast, right? After that, he has two more points and he would add that to his durability, which would now go up to a 17. Now, after that, he would have a small little icon that's beeping red and it would show special abilities. There would be one that would be unlocked and Izuku clicks on it before that ability finally pops up and it says double jump. Izuku sees that and would think to himself, double jump, before then thinking about it and thinking, just like a video game. This is just like a video game. Izuku jumps twice and realizes that he was so right. Izuku could dunk now, is the first thing that would come to his mind, but ultimately, the next thing would be, he could become a hero. He could, he could finally become a hero. Izuku would feel so excited, so unbelievably excited, mind you. And Izuku would just get this feeling of just like, I, I can do it. Like, I, I have a shot. You know what I mean? Like, this feeling is just going crazy inside of him. And he literally could not shake this feeling off for the entirety of the world. Izuku would feel so excited. And he just got that pep in his step. You know what I mean? Kind of like Miles Morales. Needless to say, I keep, you know what I mean? But anyways, he's just happy. You know, he's listening to music on his headphones. And ultimately, he makes his way towards school. Once he gets there, Bakugo would kind of be mean mugging him the whole day. But Deku just has this smile. And Bakugo could not help but notice how Izuku's happy. Also, before I forget, comment down some other special abilities that Izuku should get access to. Nothing busted, nothing too crazy, just basic things. Something along the lines of double jump, something along the lines that would help him. Nothing like sp hacking codes or like another life, you know, that's low-key a little too busted. I might add that like right at the end, but there's a very small chance that I'll do that. That said, just give me like small little things that I could add a special ability, something to give him for part two. But uh, yeah. Continuing on, Izuku would make his way towards school, and once Izuku would end up arriving, you know, obviously Bakugo notices him, you know, they go through the entire day, and Izuku basically makes his way towards the cafeteria. Izuku has all his food, he's having a great day, you know, he grabs his apple, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, and he goes on to take a bite of it. 
Once he does that, he notices that Bakugo and his goonies were going after him. Izuku seeing them would, from the corner of his eye realizes something's about to go down, and so he prepares himself. Bakugo was about to slam his food on top of Deku, like dump it, but Deku quickly gets out of the way and would be like, what the heck Bakugo? And Bakugo would be like, sorry I didn't see you there. Before then laughing and his goons would laugh with him, and Izuku would say, are you serious? You couldn't wait, not a single week before you came back and beat me up again? And Bakugo said, what's wrong? You're my personal punching bag now, at least until you take away that uh, little form to go to UA. He says, I could tell your injuries are already healed, so no point in waiting, am I right? And Deku looks at Bakugo before saying whatever, do it again then, do it, beat me up with your goons, since you need them. And Bakugo would say, I didn't need them yesterday, and I don't need them now. By the way, Izuku will look just like he did after the training with All Might at this point, and he's gonna get even more buff after the 10 months of training happened, but that's in due time. Anyways though, he actually did get a little bit more buff because of the strength boost, and it's kind of noticeable. His legs are also a little more buff as well, because speed, duh, and then he also has his double jump ability, right? Maybe like a super speed ability for like a couple seconds would be a cool little special ability later, but I digress. Anyways though, continuing on, we will basically see Izuku look at Bakugo, who would laugh and say, if you guys get in the way, I'll kill you, before turning back towards an Izuku, who would have already thrown the first punch. Izuku swings at Bakugo square in the jaw, and Bakugo would actually get a busted lip from this. Bakugo looking at the direction of Deku, saying, looks like you just earned yourself one way trip to hell before he then looks at Izuku and throws an explosion at his face. Izuku dodges it and Bakugo comes in with a right hook which Deku double jumps over and everybody would be like what? Before Izuku throws a kick at Bakugo and it would send him flying back. Bakugo would be confused like what the? But ultimately, Izuku using his added speed and strength would be able to land another blow on Bakugo, but Bakugo throws an explosion at Deku which obviously lands, and Deku tanks it using his durability and then rushes back in at Bakugo and absolutely curb like 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 curb stomps him in not in a metaphorical sense not like really but basically he goes on to land a a right a, a jab hook and uppercut on Bakugo as Bakugo gets sent on top of a uh, of a cafeteria table and he would slide down the whole thing with him falling off of it and a girl dropping her tray in Bakugo's face leading to a bunch of milk and just like pasta to just fall on Bakugo's face. Following this, Izuku and Bakugo would find themselves in the principal's office, and Bakugo would be mean mugging Deku. Inko would find herself in the office with Mitsuki, and Mitsuki would be like, Bakugo, what are you doing getting into school fights? With Deku much less, he's quirkless. And Bakugo would say, yeah, whatever, mom, you don't know nothing. But Inko would be like, Izuku, is Bakugo bullying you again? And the principal would say, actually, no, Izuku seems to have been the one that won the fight. And from what it sounds like, Bakugo came up to Deku and actually started the whole thing. But he would be like, but I'm sure there was a reason. And Inko would say, are you kidding me? You're sure there was a reason? This school is awful. I've literally had to take him to the hospital so many times because he's bullied my son. He would li she would lift up the, son the shirt of Izuku and Izuku would show so many scars. But the bottom point and the bottom line would be that she would be like, this school sucks. I'm leaving, I'm taking my kid, and I'm taking him to another school. And Mitsuki would say, I'm sorry, Inko, I, like, I had no idea. And she would say, save it. This whole time, you were just so oblivious to the fact that you were raising a delinquent. Some hero he turned out to be. And she says, don't call me. Before then leaving the room, and Izuku walks out with Inko. He would ask her if she's mad, and she would say that she's proud of him for standing up to him for, for himself, even though he's quirkless. That takes guts. And she's proud to be her, his mom. Izuku smirks and tells her that he's actually not quirkless anymore. And Inko asks, what do you mean? And Izuku says, I'll explain. He explains and we fast forward to them getting to the house. And about a week later, Izuku would find himself in another school for the next four months. Following this, we have the 10 month training period and Izuku goes absolutely nuts to butts, completing so many jobs, so many quests, just doing everything everything that Izuku could probably do in his power to get more experience points. And by the end of everything, Izuku would find himself with 30, mm, 
34, I feel like 40, 40, 45, 45, 45. He'd find himself with 45 points that he could use extra for adding to his stats. Has Izuku used them yet? No, he's literally been saving them just to add them on the last month of training. And also, just in case some of you guys wanted to know, why was there no sludge villain incident? Well, Izuku was too beat up and he got teleported back. Now, no sludge villain incident means that the sludge villain gets away because I don't want anybody to get one for all because to be honest, I just don't want anybody else to have it, right? Because I don't want Bakugo to get it. I don't want Mirio to get it because Mirio will just be way too OP. I don't want him to be number one. I want Izuku to be number one. So yeah, Mirio's not getting it. And there's a real reason why I'm doing this. I just, I just like, I trust me, just, just, just bear with me right now. But Anyways, continuing, uh, Deku has 45 experience points that he can add on top of all of his stats, meaning speed, strength, intelligence, agility, and durability, right? And because of that, Izuku has access to so much new things, right? Now, Izuku would do the very, very smart thing and would basically add almost 10 to everything that he could. He adds 10 to his speed. Now he's at 30. He adds 10 to his strength. Now he's at um, 33. He adds 10 to his intelligence. And now he has, wait, what was it before? He has 10 to his intelligence. And now it's a 35. And when it comes to his agility, he adds another 10 to that. So that becomes 22. And his durability, he would add five points to that because that's all he had left over, right? So he has five points left over. And if we do the math, that's 22, right? Yeah, 22. So now his durability is at 22. And that was just from nine months of training, of grinding absolutely hard. Keep in mind, the next couple of levels that he's going to be getting during this last month because of the fact that he upgraded himself are going to be extraordinary. He only gained 45 because Izuku was busy cleaning the beach. He was working out. He was doing the mob stuff. And he was doing all of that alongside school, you know. But the main thing he was focusing on was his own strength. So because he was working on normal strength training, let's just say that his uh, uh like baseline strength is actually at a 30 uh at a 43 just because you know gains, you know what I mean? So 43 without even experience points used on that stat. And because his his overall body would definitely get faster, let's change that to a 35 and his agility to a 30 because that would definitely increase with just physical training obviously and his durability kind of let's just leave that the same durability he didn't really train that but yeah he has all of that and now his stats are as follows 35 speed 43 strength intelligence 35 agility 30 and durability 22 now i'm keeping this little spreadsheet open just so i can like check it every time and so we're all on the same page and so for the last month, Izuku would go on an absolute tear of an insane grind. And bro goes on to get 40 points by the end of the one month. Now, what does Izuku do with those 40 points? Izuku plays it smart. He realizes that his intelligence actually helped him increase his, cho his, his choices of, of what he upgraded. And if he gets smarter, you know, that'll help out a ton. So he goes crazy and puts in 50 points into, I mean, not 50, but he puts in 20 points into intelligence, leading that to go to a 55. And then he wants to just be faster. He wants to be able to hit faster and his strength is already crazy. So he adds 20 to his speed, making that an insane 55, 43 strength. 55 intelligence, agility 30, durability 22, and obviously he still has the double jump. Now he does have the option to unlock, uh, uh, he's really, really close to unlocking a new special ability. So I really need you guys to like really help me out here when it comes to that special ability when we jump to the next part, or I actually might just use the speed one. We'll see. Anyways though, continuing on, Izuku finally at this point goes on to take the written exam, right? He goes to UA, he does the exam, he sees Bakugo like across the room because obviously they go to different schools and you know they still end up going to different robot portions, right? The, the, the written portion is boring. Izuku doesn't mutter, you know, he's kind of different. This time is around, Izuku's not as like shy and all that stuff because you know, getting buff early did give him more confidence. So he ends up getting a, away from that kind of personality trait that we 
we would have seen and instead we would see more along the lines of like a vigilante arc deku kind of vibe where you know he's still a nice guy but he can like switch up instantly if he needs to you know what i mean and izuku has been working hard you know what i mean like that that's not something that you just get you know what i mean it wasn't just offered him izuku had to grind his ass off for these 10 months to get even half as far as he has right now izuku grinded as hard as he possibly could if he wasn't sleeping or or or, or, or working on getting smarter bro was studying and just straight grinding grinding mobs and all that stuff so izuku bro went nuts to butts that's that's all i could say bro went absolutely nuts to butts but anyways Continuing on with the story, we would find ourselves in the section of the robot portion, and Izuku would make his way towards the front of the thing when suddenly he would get grabbed by a boy with blue hair. Izuku would be like, what do you want? And Ida would look at him and be like, hey, you can't go bother that girl. And you know, Izuku just kind of lets Ida ramble and talk him down, and Izuku would be like, dude, I was just going to the front. Leave me alone. Before then, like, taking Ida's hand off of him. And Ida would be like, oh, my bad. You know, he's really embarrassed. He's like, I, I apologize. You know, he bows down. And Izuku would be like, weirdo. For making his way towards the front. And as soon as the thing would start, Izuku just blitzes forward. Bro is able to keep up with Ida without the reciprocal burst. Without the reciprocal burst. But he is able to keep up with Ida. Keep in mind, Izuku's speed is a 55. So Izuku can easily keep up with Ida without his reciprocal burst, if not a little bit faster. No, yeah, let's say a little bit faster. He can keep up with Ida. It, it, like, come on, 55 speed? That's that's insane. Come on, he can definitely keep up with Ida. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, I was playing. He can keep up with Ida's reciprocal burst. Actually, mm, he can keep up with like Ida as fast as yeah, he can just keep up as, as fast as Ida is, if not like a little bit more. You know, like he's faster than Ida. Without reciprocal burst, because reciprocal burst is low key kind of crazy. But anyways, though, he could like be at that speed level. And using this, Izuku double jumps into the air and and then like lands on the top of a lamp post. Double jumps again, like parkour jumps off the side of the wall of a building, and then sees his first couple of robots. Izuku jumps down and with one fist clenched, just straight bam clobbers the robot the robot smashes to pieces and izuku's eyes would have this like green hue just going off of them izuku goes on and rushes at more and bam 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 straight nothing but raw physical prowess speed and intelligence would be able to think about where most robots would be located inside of the city and he would just use his speed to get it to as many robots as he can and destroy as many as he physically could get to. Izuku is so used to just taking on mobs like this because he's been fighting against like mob things and stuff like that. And like, like, like he's going into dungeons and stuff. Izuku fighting against these robots, this would be like, 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 like a, like a chore because Izuku is just so used to this. The only problem would be that the robots wouldn't be that many. So Izuku can't, you know, obviously get as many points as he wishes he could. You know what I mean? So Izuku ultimately only ends up getting a hundred robot points, but that's definitely still way more than Bakugo could have ever hoped to get. I think he got like 77. And then as soon as that happens, the ground starts rumbling. People are like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And Izuku turns his head to see this massive, gigantic robot standing before him. Izuku immediately assessing the situation, realizes that there's a girl over there and nobody is going to save her. Izuku at this moment just thinks just to himself that he needs to do something. And so his body just moves. He rushes in. And tries to save Araka. That same moment, the robot foot would come down, and Izuku stares, noticing that he's not gonna make it in time. He thinks, I have to get there. But how? As anime fans, we love to show our support to our favorite shows by rocking anime apparel. But something I'm pretty sure we can all agree on is it's so expensive. So I've partnered up with Fandom to bring you all affordable, high-quality anime merch that you are sure to love. And if you use my code Zether at checkout, you can even get an extra 10% off the already affordable merch. Keep in mind, it does come from overseas sellers, so its sizing is going to be different since it's overseas. That said, let's get back into the video. We would now be seconds away from Uraraka's impending doom, and suddenly, time would stop. We would flash to Nezu in his office, about to press the button to stop the zero pointer before it could crush one of his uh, future to be students, and Izuku would have a menu option pop up in front of him. He sees a new 
a special ability that just got unlocked. And that would be a speed boost. Izuku immediately seeing this realizes that this is his one and only chance and that he doesn't have another moment to spare. Clicking on it, Izuku's body would move like five times as fast as it usually does for five for only five seconds. And with that five seconds, Izuku was able to blitz in there, grab Uraraka, and get out of the way of the robot before it could even come close to crushing her. Izuku, when he grabbed onto her, he would have thrown the rubble off, grabbed Uraraka, thrown her on his back, double jumped on top of a light post, double jumped on top of a building, quadruple jumped in front of a of a higher building because he would have double jumped and then like double jumped again by you know using the wall as another jump so like quadruple jump basically and landed on top of the building only then to look back at the zero pointer seeing as he has two seconds left and deciding that he better do something izuku jumps up into the air so unbelievably hard and bam a punch would land directly in the face of the zero pointer, sending that thing straight tumbling down just like he would have done some of the original. However, this time around, we have to take into account the fact that Izuku is not as strong as a 100% duh, like Detroit Smash or anything like that. So it doesn't do half as much damage, but it does indent the robot just enough with just enough force to send it toppling backwards as Izuku begins to free fall. And Izuku, once he's free falling, he would use the robot itself to land on its arm, which would like, like be falling down and jump off of it before then going so close to the ground, he thinks that this might be it, but then he just double jumps. He double jumps and lands on the ground safely. Now, would that actually work in real life? I don't think so. But according to my surviving an elevator falling logic, it works. So let's just go with it. Anyways, though, according to my logic, Izuku survives. And because of this, we're going to be having it so that Izuku is able to kind of just like hear a crowd behind him. Izuku would see a bunch of people looking at him and Uraraka watching from up above on the building, just shocked that a student was able to do something like that. Izuku looking at them, he would finally have a moment to think like, did I do something wrong? And then the cheers. For the first time in Izuku's life, Izuku wasn't getting bullied or picked on. Izuku was getting praised and told that he did a great job. Recovery girl comes in and she says, out of the way, out of the way. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Had to do that because I don't want y'all to deal with my uh, scratchy voice. But anyways, um, recovery girl comes in and she's just like, out of the way, out of the way. And you know, everybody does so. And then recovery girl just kind of goes and, you know, she looks at her Araka and she's just like, oh, well, sweetheart, you know, you, you, you just have a little fractured, uh, you know, ankle. I can heal that up for you. You know, she kisses her Araka and her Araka's like, thanks, you know, with a big bright smile as recovery girl smiles back and Izuku would find himself just walking back home with a huge pep in his step, just straight skipping, just having an amazing time. And he realizes, wait, did I just... Izuku realizes that he just got so many points for defeating that robot. Izuku was just gifted an insane 30 points for taking out that massive robot by himself. And what would Izuku use those points on? Well, Izuku decides one thing. He thinks to himself that he should probably help uh, balance everything out. So he thinks I'll put 10 points into agility and 20 points into durability. So his agility turns into a wait was what, what was it before uh it turns into a 40 and his durability turns into a 42 because we definitely needed to up that durability now he's looking can tank high ranking attacks like nobody's business and he can just kind of hold up a lot longer in battle his agility stats will be even crazier that will help out his speed and his strength considering he'll be able to pull off different acrobatic like nightwing batman s type moves which will definitely serve to help him in the next upcoming events that will be taking place very very soon that said though two weeks would pass and izuku would finally get his acceptance letter from ua opening it only to receive all might who would be like, ha, 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 I am here. And after this, you know, he's just told that he's accepted and Izuku goes to his room. There, Izuku would begin fidgeting with his video game system and realizes that there's a shop. Izuku sees that there's potions he can buy and there wouldn't be many. There's just a healing potion. There is a stamina potion 
and there is a strength boost potion which can increase the speed um by a 0.5 for a couple of minutes right so that helps out a bit but izuku is more focused on the healing potion izuku could theoretically use that to heal people from sicknesses and stuff like that and izuku would definitely take note of that he has a bunch of coins since he hasn't used any of them and experiencing coins are different things so izuku definitely has more than enough to buy himself like 10 health potions so he does that and he also gets himself a strength boost potion in case he ever were to need it and for now those are the only potions available but definitely make sure to comment down some ideas and i'll be sure to take them into account for the next part which will be part three since i'm pretty sure i'm not going to finish it all this video but uh yeah anyways so continuing on with the story izuku's stats are now as follows speed 55 strength 43 iq 55 agility 40 and durability 42 with a couple of cool potions to help him throughout his hero journey. Now, because of this, we are definitely going to be needing a couple of things added to his arsenal, and because of that, Izuku will be working on his brand new ability, learning how to use it accurately, and seeing as his intelligence is an astounding 55, Izuku would realize that the best way to utilize double jump would be to double jump <laughs> i'm sorry I, I i don't have a 55 iq like 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 55 like level iq you know what i mean like i'm not like half maxed out you know so i can't really think of something cool i'm pretty sure you guys could but not me for now he kind of just uses that to you know get high and you know all that stuff not in that way but <laughs> uh q q uh um q q q Tauli, the little little pot plant um but no um, continuing on with the story, Izuku finally would make his way towards UA, and there, he would notice a massive, massive, massive door, walking inside only to see the one person he hoped he would never have to deal with again, Katsuki Bakugo. Bakugo seeing Izuku walk towards those doors would be like, huh? What are you doing here, Deku? Wasn't it clear to you that you weren't supposed to enroll for the school? How'd you even get in, you quirkless loser? I can't believe they let somebody like you in. And then... Araka walks in behind him, saying, He's not quirkless. I mean, I saw him. He saved me. He even beat up a zero pointer in front of me. Everybody in my section saw. How could somebody as miraculous as him and incredible be quirkless? She looks at him with a smile and says, And I never got to thank you, so thanks. And Bakugo looking at the direction of Araka, he would have just this dumbfounded look of, Huh? What are you talking about? That loser's been quirkless ever since I knew him, since we were kids. He's always been useless. That's why he's a Deku. And Izuku looking towards the direction of Bakugo. You know, he's bigger than him now in terms of muscle mass. He looks just like the one that we see in the thumbnail. Bro was basically comp comparable to Mirio as a first year. So, um, yeah. Bro's kind of built like Sato, but not as exaggerated when it comes to the muscle mass and stuff. So... Yeah, buff, but not so buff that it looks disgusting. But anyways, though, continuing on with the story, um, I just do want to tell you guys one little thing. If you guys go on to hear any talking in the background or like somebody like like talking or whatever, just know it's my family. I was recording the first portion of this without them here, and I thought they were, weren't going to be home for a while. So I was like, yes, finally, I get to record my video. You know what I mean? But <sighs> it is what it is. I'm going to keep going just because I don't feel like doing this later. But anyways, okay, so continuing on with the story. Once this happens, Bakugo looks towards the direction of Deku and says, <laughs> So, I guess it is true. That moment when I saw you double jump in the air. Looks like your quirk truly has manifested. But if that's all it is, then I'm not worried. The last time we fought, you got lucky, Deku. And it won't happen again. Just know, just the way that you've been training, I have too. I promise, the next time we meet, it won't be so easy on you, you half-assed cripple. Before looking at the direction of Deku and saying you'll always be the quirkless loser to me. And, you know, even Ida comes up to, 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 to like, defend Deku. He's like, hey, you know, like, that's no way to talk to your classmates. Like, what are you doing, kid? And Bakugo would say, shut up. Before suddenly, a yellow sleeping bag would open at the front and it would say, everybody shut up. Look, we're going to be starting class. Put these on and meet me outside. Araka would be like, but uh, what about orientation? And Aizawa would say, there is no orientation. Here at UA, us teachers are allowed to run our classrooms as we see fit. 
And since I don't think you guys are going to be needing some dumb orientation to be praised about, then we're going to be doing things my way. Like I said, put these on and meet me outside. Everybody does so and they would be kind of confused being like, are, are, is this guy serious? Like, who even is he? And Izuku would realize exactly who this is. His name would be above his head along with his quirk. And Izuku would say, Eraserhead. Aizawa. That's, that's Eraserhead. Quirk. Erasure. Izuku would smirk before then turning towards the direction of all of his classmates and seeing all of their quirks and their names and their ages up above, as well as their health and all that stuff, and Izuku would smile before thinking to himself, that's new, realizing that he just unlocked another special ability that is active at all times, something that he gets when he reaches, like, a certain level when all of his stats are like at a pretty high enough decent level and seeing as most of his stats are already getting to like that 50% mark and he's already like almost half as strong as he's gonna be this is why I figured that it would be a perfect spot to throw this in there but I digress okay so continuing on they all make their way outside for the quirk assessment test obviously and with this test would come a bunch of different moments obviously we have the throwing ball and the person who would be doing that would be zuku considering that he ends up getting 150 uh robot no no no, 100 robot points and 50 rescue points so zuku gets a grand total of 150 and so because of this zuku would be the one to throw the ball Bakugo would get enraged at the fact that Izuku beat him at the test, and he would be very, very, very butthurt at this. Izuku would throw the ball and shock everybody. Izuku decides that for now, he's going to use that little potion to up, his, up the antes. And so, as everybody would look at him, they would notice that a little bottle would appear in front of Izuku. And Aizawa would say, hey kid, what's that? And Deku would say, don't worry, it's part of my quirk. Before grabbing the little bottle, chugging it down, and glowing a little bit. Everybody would watch this in awe and confusion, and, and Izuku would say, well, here goes nothing, before throwing the ball as hard as he possibly can, and getting an insane score of I don't know what, just, I, I, I don't know, but like 40% like of like somebody with a video game type quirk, so let's say that somebody's normal score would be like something, like under 100 meters, so because he has like insane strength now, Let's say that he's at around 40% one for all, considering his strength is insane. Actually, no, that's that's kind of busted. 30% strength one for all. Let's say he gets like a little bit over the score that Bakugo is going to be getting in this test. Just because I want Bakugo to let that realization sink in. That even though he trained on his quirk and has been training on his fighting skills and doing all this. And even though his score will even go up by like 200, Izuku still beat that. Like... Think about how hard that would hit you if somebody who you consider to be like weak beat you up and then continue to be better than you. Bro, that would hit. That would kill your ego. Like, like seriously, just completely dead. But um, uh, hmm, what happens next after that? Oh, right. The rest of the test would happen. And just know Izuku gets phenomenal marks for each and every single one. Going on to get great scores. And going on to get very, very, very lucky when it comes to the people that would come behind him. So he could kind of examine how these tests are all going to be going. Izuku ultimately, because of his video game style quirk. And because of the fact that he has almost all equal stats. And he's very, very, very intelligent. He's basically already Nezu level. Seeing as his intelligence is already at a 55. Izuku using his intelligence would be able to find the best ways to utilize his video game rpg quirk and be able to ultimately completely destroy the competition beating momo for first place and ultimately making his way back home where bakugo stops him and tells him that soon he's gonna show him that just because he won this time that doesn't mean that he's gonna be winning ever again you got that you quirkless nerd as you know he walks off and Izuku looks towards the direction of Bakugo before thinking how he feels bad for him. He's so caught up in his own ego and complex that he can't stop to realize that Izuku never even wanted to be his enemy. But if that's what Bakugo wants, then that's what he's going to get. I guess they'll be rivals from now on, Izuku would think. And so, Bakugo would basically go on to stay in the hero course and nothing would change whatsoever. Two days would pass of normal school activities and those first two days would have just been spent teaching them the basics of like uh, um, of uh, academics right and then the third day obviously the day that it is now they would be in class when suddenly 
All Might would end up busting through the door and being like, I am here, you know what I mean? And everybody gets completely excited, you know, they're all having an amazing time. You know, obviously, you see the greatest hero of all time in the world. It's kind of like, for, for me, it would kind of feel like Steph Curry just walking into like my school. Like, I would be, I'd be going crazy, but that's just me. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much how they would react. And then All Might would end up being all like, the clothes make the pros before clicking a button. And it's just such an awesome scene in My Hero. Clothes would end up popping out and all of their hero costumes would end up showing up. Izuku's hero costume this time is basically going to be exactly what you guys see in the thumbnail. Pretty much going to be the same costume that he has in the original, but it's going to be more like spandexy, like superhero like. Instead of the 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 little costume that he would have gotten in the original, we're gonna be getting like a more like cooler look on that, like a more badass approach. You know what I mean? Something along the lines of like a Superman esque kind of suit, without the undies on the outside, of course. But continuing forward izuku would be having these like very hard boots that are really lightweight like they're lightweight and hard at the same time he's gonna also be having these gauntlets that are capable of like 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 landing insane blows and they're also lightweight and he would also be having a retractable cape a cape that is flame resistant and he got it because of bakugo deku knows that he's durable but he's not flame resistant and with this flame with, with, with this cape, he can pretty much press a button and like this cape will come out and Izuku can just grab it and put it over his face and stuff since that's like the part that isn't flame resistant and like cover himself so that he doesn't get hurt by flames. This is something that he's definitely going to be using for Bakugo, mind you. But basically what ends up happening is that All Might goes on to tell the entirety of the classroom that for now, they're all basically just going to need to suit up and pick some names from this bowl. Immediately, Bakugo and Deku would pull out some names and they realize that they're going to be going up against each other. Izuku, knowing that his his teammate is going to be Uraraka, he would smile, knowing that it would be that nice girl that he saved. And Uraraka just seems like a really, really kind person overall. Izuku's happy that she's the one that he ended up getting teamed up with. And so, Izuku would smirk at her before she would smile and say, So, I guess it's kind of going to be something like a faded rivals kind of fight? And Izuku says, Honestly, yeah, it is. I don't know what Bakugo's gonna do exactly, but I know one thing. Knowing him, he's definitely gonna come after me. How he's gonna fight me and what exactly, what techniques he's gonna use, not sure, but all I know is I gotta be ready. I think that the strategy that we should use is for you to go up on the top floor on the left side, seeing as Bakugo is always more of like a right side kind of guy, and knowing him, he's definitely going to be coming after me. So stay close by until we hear him, and then go the opposite direction up the stairs and make your way towards the bomb room. When you get there, use your intercom to let me know that you're there, and trust me, by that point, I'll definitely have handled Bakugo. Araraka would say, <laughs> you're confident, I like it. Wish I could be as confident as you. And Izuku would say, you will be someday. Trust me, your quirk is incredible. It's gravity, right? Think about it like this. If you touch somebody, the fight's over. What are they going to do without gravity? Nobody's really used to fighting that way. And Araraka would smirk before saying, you're right. Izuku says that her quirk has so much potential and to never doubt herself. You know, she smiles and she kind of blushes a little bit, looking at, you know, the chest of Deku and the arms like, bro is ripped. And so, you know, he just smiles and his hair is actually a lot different, exactly like what you guys see in the thumbnail. So, you know, Izuku looks a lot better. And, you know, then finally, you know, we hear Bakugo in the hallway just going, Deku, before, you know, he ends up arriving and he would throw a massive explosion at the direction of Izuku with his right and left arm, closing them both before shooting a massive explosion in Deku's face. Deku, at that precise moment, grabs his cloak and puts it in front of himself as Bakugo would flip over on top of him, sweep at Deku's leg and ultimately land a berserk explosion in Deku's face. Deku would get a bunch of damage from that his face would get scuffed up blood would begin pouring out and izuku would be sent flying towards the wall where izuku would think to himself how in the world bakugo got this strong like the last time he fought him he was so predictable it seems he actually has been training and so deku stands up and looking towards bakugo cracks his neck and says come on 
Go time, kid, before rushing in and fighting Bakugo hand to hand. Bakugo using his explosions to pretty much help him out and using weird and sneaky tactics and even trying to use an AP shot point blank, which Deku would dodge using his insane reflexes. Deku realizing that Bakugo is trying to make this a battle where he lands just as much explosions as he can on Deku and he's not going for like non-vital points. Bakugo was literally trying to, it almost looks like, go for the kill. All Might would be telling Bakugo to calm down, but Bakugo would be saying, not a chance, teach before then continuing on with the battle and punching Izuku square in the jaw. Izuku delivers a blow right back and a knee to Bakugo's stomach before sending him crashing back into a wall and then grabbing Bakugo by the leg as Bakugo grabs what uses his arms as explosions and shoots himself up in the air, slamming Deku into the ceiling and Deku would fall down with Bakugo saying, <laughs> you know Deku, this whole time I haven't exactly just been going after you because I wanted to hurt you. It's because of this, as both gauntlets would flash, you know, like that they're ready, and Bakugo looking towards the direction of Deku would say, Dodge this, quirkless nerd, before pulling both pins, and immediately the explosion gauntlets would go off insanely, like, fast right just blowing up that entire room the intercom signals would finally be lost and then the next thing that we would pick up would be izuku using his speed for five seconds to blitz inside of one of the rooms and just jump straight through the wall knowing that that explosion was going to do heavy damage immediately as soon as he jumped in using his cape to cover himself from the flames and knowing that the explosion was finally over izuku blitzes towards the direction of bakugo through the smoke and using his ability of, you know, being able to see, um, you know, Bakugo's name and all that stuff in his stats, if he if he's like in his range of sight, you know, like if, if he's kind of in his range of sight, if he can like slightly see him, that pops up. And Izuku could slightly see him. It's not x-ray vision, so he can't see him if he's through a wall, but it's smoke screen, right? So that's different. But anyways... Deku uses this and rushing in using his insane speed and also using a strength boost potion would have come in and land an insane uppercut on Bakugo which sends him crashing through two separate walls and then rushing over towards him kicks him right in the ribs slamming him through an entire like um support beam as Bakugo coughs out blood and blood <laughs> and Deku captures him up with capture tape before saying you've fallen such a long way bakugo before i thought you were gonna be a hero but now you don't act like a hero at all you're just a villain a bully and bakugo would open one eye after hearing these words from deku and you just see so much hate this version of bakugo just has bloodlust in his eyes and he seriously was trying to kill deku following this all Might would end up arriving, taking Bakugo to the nurse and telling him that he can't be doing this. Immediately after this, Aizawa would end up arriving on the scene and watching the tape, Aizawa would not think twice before seeing your expelled Bakugo, come with me. Using his erasure quirk on Bakugo, leaving Bakugo no way of doing anything and bro just gets expelled. Mizuki gets called to the office and she is informed that Bakugo is not fit to be a hero. He acts more like a villain, and if anything, he needs to put in severe therapy now before this thing gets any worse. And so, he gets kicked out, and he blames everything on Deku. On the flip side, however, Deku would be inside of a room with All Might as he would ask him a question. All Might, I have to tell you something. Ever since I saw you, I realized one thing. Your health bar. For some reason, it says you're at 50% all the time. Why is that? And All Might would be like, 50%? What <gasps> What are you talking about? And Izuki would say, sorry, I didn't really explain. Well, have you ever played RPG style games where you kind of have stats and you can upgrade yourself and stuff like that? And All Might would say, oh, right, I used to play games like that in my youth. Yeah, um, what about it? Izuku would say, well, with my quirk, it's kind of like that. I can upgrade myself by completing missions and tasks. And I can see everybody's name, stats, quirks, and age, but for you, I, I can't. I don't know why, but for some reason, your stats are just different. Everybody else has their health at 100% when they look healthy, but you, your health is at 50. All Might, why? And All Might shuts the door before then saying, kid, 
I didn't know that anybody was going to ever find out about this. But seeing as you ended up finding out about this on your own, I guess there's no real reason to hide this from you. <laughs> Going back into a small might form, he says, kid, don't freak out. I am all might. But the thing is, I suffered an extreme accident, lifting up his shirt and showing Izuku the fact that he has this gnarly scar. He would go on to explain his entire backstory with All For One and how he has been struggling with this for the past couple years. Izuku says that he thought something like that might have been the case and he would ask if it was Chainsaw, uh, Chainsaw Man or something like that. And Alma would be like, <laughs> nah, he's powerful, but not this powerful. Explaining All For One and saying how he's been looking for a successor. Saying that, you know, after seeing his performance today, he thinks that might be him. And Izuku says, what would you say if you could keep being a hero and maybe hold off on that? And All Might would be like, that'd be awesome. But Deku would say, well, here, All Might, you've been my symbol of hope, peace, and everything ever since I could remember. And I want to help you. All Might, I know you might not have complete trust in me seeing as I'm just your student, but drink this. And I promise that you'll be healed just like new in a matter of an instant. All Might grabs onto the drink and would gulp it down before then glowing like a, a yellow aura and then checking his stomach. It It's healed and All Might went into his buff form and, and it just never went away. All Might gripped at his fists and brought Izuku in for the biggest bear hug of Izuku's life. Izuku would be like, uh, too tight, too tight. And All Might would just like be like, kid, we got to go celebrate. They go celebrate and Izuku ends up arriving home very, very, very late at night, right? And Bakugo right now is just in a bad state mentally. So Bakugo thinks that, you know, Deku ruined his life. So now... Bakugo has to ruin his life. And so we would cut to a scene where Bakugo is making his way towards the Midoriya residence. He goes towards the door and shakes at the doorknob, knocking, and Inko would come in and be like, what do you want, Bakugo? And Bakugo just enters and would literally proceed to just look at her and say, it's nothing personal, before BAM! Immediately, almost as if time itself would have stopped, we would see particles of the explosion that would have went off on Bakugo's hand straight melt off the skin on Inko's face as she would get sent flying to the floor and there would be explosion marks all over the door. Bakugo from here slams the door and would run away with a smile on his face knowing that if anything he did could have got Izuku back for what he did not got him expelled from UA, it was this. And now... Now that Bakugo did this, he knows that there's no turning back. I mean, Bakugo knew it was either hero or villain because Bakugo was going to use his quirk one way or the other. And so with the hero school kicking him out, he has no other choice or so he thinks. Bakugo, through doing a little bit of research, ends up finding a strange organization, the League of Villains. And so he would involve himself with it meeting a strange broker and ending up joining the League of Villains. And so we cut back to a scene in which Izuku being happy that he just got to meet, you know, his idol All Might. He healed him. All Might is grateful and even tells Deku that someday soon, you know, if he ever was to want one for all and be a successor, he knows the door will be wide open for him to be that. And Izuku would tell him not to give it to him, but to give it to somebody who truly needs it, somebody quirkless, somebody who has no hope of becoming a hero, because that way we could have a true, real symbol of people, somebody with a heroic heart, you know? All Might would think about that and would realize that, you know what, that's a great idea. And so, All Might thinks on them. But for now, Izuku makes his way home. Getting off of the train, Izuku would have just this big smile on his face, and he would walk towards the direction of his apartment building. Once Izuku sees the door and sees like the burn marks on it, he'd be like, what's going? He opens the door and immediately after opening it, his keys fall and hit the ground. Izuku doesn't think he's ever seen his body move as fast as it, ha as, as fast as it does, but he looks over at the body of his mother, Inko, and he notices that her face, it's completely mangled. She was blown up. And Izuku only knows one person that could have potentially used an explosion this powerful. Immediately it would go through his mind. Did, did Bakugo do this? Izuku would think. But 
there's no other option. It it had to be Bakugo, right? Izuku thinks to himself that there's no way Bakugo would have done something like this. But then he remembers the look that Bakugo had in his eyes just before he did this. And Izuku realizing that that definitely had to be it. He comes to terms with the fact that Bakugo truly did kill his mother. The feeling of sadness going over through Deku's body would finally subside and he would realize that his mother's dead. Immediately after this, an unparalleled rage would go forth in his head and Izuku knowing that there's nothing he can do other than vent out this anger, Izuku decides to call the authorities and they end up arriving. Izuku tells them everything that would have happened, and Izuku knowing that if he doesn't let go of this pent up anger it's going to eat him alive, would decide that the best thing that he could do now is level up and grind, become the hero that his mother always thought he could be and bring Bakugo to justice. Rage was completely overflowing inside of Izuku, I mean, what would you think if somebody you considered a friend killed your mother, you got home after a great day and you found something like this out? Izuku's phone would be blowing up from text by All Might, Nezu, Aizawa, and everybody would be trying to tell him, you know, like, like, like he can, he can come to UA, you know, he can stay there, you know, All Might giving him invitations to come live with him, and, you know, he's basically telling him that they'll catch whoever did this. But Izuku, he's not answering. Izuku's busy inside of a mob farm, completing quests and doing missions. As of this current moment, Izuku's stats are as follows. Let me go find it. Right, right, right. Just, just to give you guys a mini recap. Speed, 55. Strength, 43. IQ, 55. Until agility, 40. And durability, 42. Obviously, his special ability is double jump. And dash for 5 seconds would still be a thing, right? So, Izuku does have access to those things. And right now, Izuku spent that entire night just straight grinding points. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Killing mob after mob after mob. And... Izuku just doesn't feel bad. It would be a complete massacre on the side of Izuku, and he would have ended up racking up so many points that it would have been just completely unbelievable how many points Izuku would have gotten. Just in one night, Izuku from the trauma that he was feeling would have ended up racking up 50 points using his insane stats to defeat M B boss from different dungeons. Izuku would have taken out so many straight up like 30 mob bosses just that one day, including all of the mob farms and all of the things that he could have done. He ends up getting 50 points in one night, literally one night, an entire 24 hours of just not sleeping, just taking potions to restore his um stamina. And Izuku just continued going and going and going and going until the next morning at school. And when Izuku realized this, by that point, he would have already have used all of his stats. Izuku was thinking about one thing, and that thing was absolutely destroying Bakugo. If Izuku knows one thing, it's that Bakugo, Bakugo is definitely smart, and he knows the consequences of what he just did. And Izuku hopes that he runs into Bakugo very soon, because he seriously can't wait to show Bakugo what a 93 strength looks like. All 50 of those points, because Izuku wasn't in the right state of mind, would have immediately been used to try to get himself way more powerful. And now Izuku is almost maxed out when it comes to his strength, and all the other stats re basically remain the same. But Izuku just has one thing on his mind, to get back vengeance for his mother and get that shit back in blood. <laughs> but no, seriously. Izuku goes to school the next day and it would be there that Izuku would have a talk with the counselor. Izuku realizing that he truly doesn't know have anywhere to live now because he has no money and his father Hiyashi just got the news. Hisashi would decide that he can't really come back so all he can do is send Izuku money and obviously he could live by himself but All Might thinks that maybe that's not the best course of action. I mean a kid that just had his parents die definitely needs somebody around. Hisashi and Izuku would mourn the very following day over the loss of Inko, and a funeral would be held. However, nothing would happen, and Izuku would be excused for that day. Eventually, he gets a notice of the fact that they're having the USJ event, and Bakugo at this point would have already been enrolled with the League of Villains, also getting access to a brand new quirk to make his own already powerful abilities even more powerful. The quirk being Overdrive. An ability that allows him to increase his stats twofold and make him an absolute juggernaut and beast. 
and that's the ability that Bakugo gets access to thanks to obviously one I mean all for one right now because of this Bakugo becomes a lot stronger and he would end up actually you know being told by all for one that he has one mission to kill all mine Bakugo realizing that you know that is his hero and once was would think to himself that maybe villainy isn't the best thing but then he remembers the way that all might looked at him the way they told him what are you thinking what are you doing and you know he really can't find it in his heart to think that all might's his hero anymore now that spot belongs to all for one and he's gonna make sure to make him proud because bakugo knows that the more quirks that he has access to the more powerful he will be and the easier it will be to absolutely destroy deku with this quirk, there's no way he'll lose to that loser, right? He can't have gotten that strong in such a short period of time, is what Bakugo would think, but he has absolutely no idea of how powerful Izuku has gotten in just that short amount of time. And also, I have to mention, he would have also had about four more days, or to be frank, about one more week worth of just collecting points that Izuku would have used. And so, Izuku would have ended up getting a grand total of 70 points because Bro was straight grinding, but because All Might was there, you know, he spent a lot of time talking to All Might, you know, the symbol of peace, he spent a lot of time grieving his mother, he spent a lot of time, you know, obviously spending time with All Might and training with him on the outside world, and so, Izuku would have ultimately gained access to a grand total of 80 points using his absolutely new stats to just shred through the mob farms that he usually has. So now, Izuku is just rising when it comes to his abilities and stuff like that, like crazy. Putting 40 points, 40, keep that in mind, 40 points into speed, making that a 95, and 40 points into his durability, making that an 82. So now Izuku is an absolute tank. Bro is basically maxed out when it comes to his speed and strength, and when it comes to his durability, there's not a thing that Bakugo is going to be able to do to hurt him. Like you'd have to land a, 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 a literal like pierce through his heart, like heart to kill Izuku. Like, or, or, or like shoot him in the head with a gun, like point blank rage for Izuku to die. His durability is absolutely insane. And if he had those extra 20 points, those bullets would straight ricochet off of him like Superman. So that wouldn't work at that point. But... Essentially, what would happen is we would find ourselves on the day of the USJ, and it would be here that Kurigiri would make his presence known, immediately teleporting all of the students to different locations. And so, Izuku has a very important task, and that task is to essentially find. Um, how do I put this? Um, hmm. Izuku has a very, very important task to save Mineta and Suyu, right? I had a train of thought, but I lost it. So I'm just going to continue with what I know. So he obviously saves Mineta and Suyu. And because he saves Mineta and Suyu, you know, they're safe and all that. He takes them over towards the rest of the class. And once Izuku realizes that Aizawa is currently doing like a 1v20, Izuku blitzes down there and using his newfound strength and speed alongside with his, um, with his double jump ability, he would jump on top of the, in the air actually, sorry. And he would come down with a massive punch that would literally leave a crate, a crate crater in the earth and it would be Tsunade levels of strength just leaving a complete shattering crater in the earth leaving all the villains to be blown back and Izuku to look at the direction of Aizawa telling him don't stop continue Aizawa using his scarf would lunge it at one person grabbing the villain and slamming him onto the ground and Izuku continues his onslaught of trying to basically take out every villain possible suddenly Izuku hears familiar crackling in the distance and he would hear one person's voice say Deku! As he comes flying in at Izuku, and Izuku realizing that Bakugo is right there, the guy who killed his mother, would get enraged. That feeling that he had just gotten over with after so much time of, you know, having to grieve and one week of just speaking with All Might who can relate to him because he lost, you know, his mentor, Anana Shimura, that feeling of just like being over it, it completely went away. It came back two times as hard and now Izuku looks straight at Bakugo as Deku showing absolutely no mercy to a Bakugo who was keep in mind using the two times his ability was would blitz at him and Bakugo shoots a point blank explosion at Deku's face which Deku completely tanks and then punches Bakugo square in the stomach sending him flying through the entirety of like two 
um two buildings right that would be in the like building biome and izuku looking at bakugo would say you have no idea what you did bakugo you killed my mother and now you're gonna die you're gonna die the same way she did bakugo wipes the blood off of his mouth and says <laughs> whatever nerd it's not like you didn't take away my entire dream you took my dream i take something from you that's how this world works right an eye for an eye Check you. As Izuku looks at the direction of Bakugo and would say he has no idea what he's gotten himself into. Blitzing behind Bakugo, Bakugo turning around and seeing a mirror image of Izuku, just literally an after image. And then Izuku punches at Bakugo so unbelievably hard in the face that Bakugo would send crashing into the ground, shattering the ground, leaving a crater. And Izuku double jumps up into the air using his dash ability to land on top of Bakugo with one elbow just bam straight wwe type move on him bakugo coughs out tons of blood and would be like <coughs> how you know what i mean Being like how you know what i mean and deku just looking at the direction of bakugo on the ground would then start stomping him in his face like straight stomping him with his strength and bakugo's face would look unrecognizable straight bloodied and pulp and izuku looks at him and says that he deserves that and more but he's lucky that he's going to spare his life and just take him to Tartarus. Bakugo spits blood and spit on Deku's face. And Deku, for good measure, punches Bakugo square in the ribs so that it's hard for Bakugo to breathe. And Bakugo feels like he's genuinely going to die. But suddenly, Izuku realizes that Aizawa this whole time that Bakugo has, and himself have been fighting... Aizawa has been literally fighting against this gigantic thing. It looks like one of the mob, the beasts from one of the mob farms that he had explored. And Izuku would blitz at it, taking out a blade that he would have unlocked from one of the dungeons and straight slash off the head of the Nomu. And this blade has a very special ability. It can take away the regenerative properties of beings, so they can't regenerate that part. And Izuku just straight, bam, slashed off the head of the Nomu, leaving the Nomu to just spurt out blood and Shigaraki to just stare at Izuku, who at this point was walking towards him kuragiri opening a portal to try to help her, uh, shigaraki and save him but izuku was not having none of this izuku rushes towards the direction of shigaraki grabbing him by the throat and asking him why in the world they would attack a, an entire classroom full of future heroes is he out of his mind he would say and shigaraki would be like be grasping at the hand of, of deku like trying to use his decay quirk and deku notices that you know aizawa is using his quirk so he doesn't care whatsoever he He'd be like what's your game looking at his name seeing that his quirk is decay and izuku would say azawa don't turn your quirk off this guy has the ability to decay me so if he actually gets to touching me with that thing might actually hurt a bit and so izuku would slam shigaraki on the ground before then giving him one good punch in the face and turning towards Shig uh, kuragiri whose name would say shirakumo above him and the quirk would be warp gate and it would also be half and half and it would say clouds because that's the original quirk of Shirakuma or Kuragiri, right? And so, because of this, Izuku realizing that, you know, Shigaraki or Kuragiri isn't the real person that's underneath, would grab a potion that he has inside of himself, take uh, Kuragiri out, and dump the potion on top of Kuragiri, leading Kuragiri to transform back to his human state, and Shigaraki would go burst into tears. Just, I mean, not Shigaraki, but um aizawa would burst into tears noticing that that's shirakumo asking how in the world that happened and just looking at izuku asking what in the world just happened izuku says that he healed him and he brought him back to his original state using his quirk and aizawa would just like thank deku and then suddenly a black portal would open in the middle of the entirety of the usj and a man with a mask would step out clapping before saying looks like you took out my protege and you took out a very promising villain as well. If I allow you to grow any stronger, then you might actually pose a threat. So, I figured that I should take you out now, before a bunch of Nomus would come out alongside All for One, and Izuku would say, You're the big boss, huh? You're the big bad. The one that All Might told me about. All for One, right? All for One would say, That's me. And Izuku would say, so you're the one responsible for this worthless sack of crap right here. This guy lifting Shigaraki up by his hair and Offerum would say, I am. Before suddenly, 
All Might would burst through the door and looking at offer one Annie Zuku would get a very angry being like, no, 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 like, like don't kill Izuku. But All Might doesn't know how insanely powerful Izuku truly is at this point. And Izuku just looking at the direction of offer one tilts his head slightly before saying, you know, you might as well be a food delivery service the way you came here to die so easily. And All Might would look at Izuku and be like, die, what are you talking about, young Midoriya? We don't before instantly, like before he and All For One could even react, Izuku just blitzes All For One and straight decapitates him, grabbing his mask and tossing it at one of the Nomals. The Nomals blitzing in at him, throwing punches and screeching, and Izuku, seeing as they were already told to kill him, they would all rush in at Izuku, right? And, you know, Izuku would just blitz at the Nomu, just like tearing through them like nobody's business ever. And just like, just, just absolutely destroy them. There was literally no other way that I could have potentially put this thing. Izuku absolutely obliterates each and every single one of the Nomus. And luckily, nobody saw Izuku kill off for one. And, you know, they could probably still cover it up as him just being another Nomu or something. But now... Izuku officially has a real person that he's killed, not just a mob in a dungeon, but somebody real. And All Might thinks that this might affect Izuku in some negative way in the future, so he decides to keep it hidden. The USJ cleanup stuff would still happen, just like you guys would imagine, and so we would end up jumping into a situation where one week later, we fast forward to Izuku being talked to by All Might and told, or no, not one week later, but a couple of hours later, as All Might asks him why in the world he would kill him. Izuku says that, that piece of garbage was responsible for him. His name is um, Tem Tem Temura Shimura Shimura Shigara uh, Sh Shigaraki Shimura. I don't know, but Shigaraki's real name. He would say that, and All Might's eyes would widen up as Izuku would say, "Yeah, I made the connection myself when I was fighting him. I came to realize that this definitely, this boy was definitely related to your master, and because of him, look at what he's become. Unrecognizable." From what it sounds like your master was, she's a great person, but this guy, he doesn't deserve it. I should get rid of him now. But All Might steps in front of Izuku and says, Young man, you've done enough. <music> Izuku looks to All Might and says, You don't want to do this, All Might. And All Might looks at the direction of Midoriya with just this expression of like, I don't want to, you're right, but if I have to, I must. And Izuku, you know, he summons his blade and he looks at the direction of All Might as he says that he healed them and now he's going to have to put him back in that same state because right now All Might isn't thinking too clearly. <laughs> A bit funny coming from him. But anyways, eventually Izuku rushing in would end up slashing All Might right in the side. Realizing this, All Might looks at, at, at the bottom of his side and he sees that there's a gashing wound there and he falls onto one knee and he would be like <laughs> how you know what i mean and izuku would be ready to throw the final blow when suddenly he gets a memory of what his mother was like he gets a memory of how he would wear the all might little onesies and you know play hero with her and how All Might was his biggest inspiration growing up how All Might has literally been there for Izuku ever since he lost his mom and Izuku just drops the blade he falls onto his knees and just starts crying like Izuku finally lets it out this whole time Izuku's just been bottling up his emotions and channeling it through rage but he didn't really give himself the opportunity to just be a normal teenager be a human be a a, a kid Izuku is 14 years old 15 and he already lost his mother because Bakugo because of him he doesn't have a mom anymore and Deku just he hates that feeling you know he hates the feeling of being helpless and not being able to do anything in that position and he, this this all just completely comes out all in one moment and you know all might looks towards the direction of izuku and he gets up weakly and you know he puts one hand on his shoulder and izuku looks to all might and he would say he's so sorry for giving him a health potion and all might would completely get healed and would say it's okay young midoriya i knew that the way that I was telling you to deal with your emotions was not healthy. We can we can work on that. And Izuku would look at the direction of All Might before saying, I I tried to kill you. And All Might says, You were just having a moment of weakness. And Izuku just 
He just looks down and he's like, I don't think I'm ready to be a hero. And All Might says, look, I wasn't going to tell you this, but the reason that All For One has to wear that mask is because long ago when I was about your age, I tried to kill him as well. I wasn't successful in my endeavor, but that's why he has to wear that mask. Not because he's lived for so long, but because I almost killed him. And Izuku, you know, his eyes widen and he's like, you, the symbol of peace, killing somebody? I don't believe it. There's no way you would ever do something like that, All Might. And All Might just looks at the direction of Izuku with a stern face and would say, it's true, young Midoriya. I wasn't always the symbol of peace you see me today, but... I hope that, you know, something like this can maybe ease your worries. You are ready to be a hero. The mere fact that you are willing to accept your mistakes and say that you aren't willing, that you aren't capable of being a hero, is what makes you worthy of becoming a hero. The fact that you are willing to withstand all that pain and anger and trauma that you had within you for so long for the sake of everybody else shows what a hero you are. Izuku, that is what a hero is. Somebody who's willing to take on the burdens of this world so that nobody else has to. You're as much of a hero as anybody else. Don't let anybody tell you differently. And Izuku would just, you know, he falls down and he just starts crying, you know what I mean? Like that part of him that had been locked away for so long finally comes back out and, you know, he's vulnerable. It's a really heartfelt moment, but ultimately after that happens, they end up pretty much going back to classes and they end up making their way towards the sports festival event, right? The sports festival ends up going down. Izuku is told to give the speech and he would definitely do so. And then we would have the first event being the race. Now, Izuku having the abilities that he has at this point and having all of his stats basically already be maxed out, seeing as his speed would already be a 95, Izuku would instantly blitz towards the finish line and that would be no problem. When it comes to who he's going to be picking for his teammates, Izuku would use an ability called multi-clone to essentially be able to clone himself for a duration of five minutes and the clones would be like five percent like not five percent of his strength but they'd be like 20 percent of his strength right of his real strength and that's what Izuku uses for his team people would be like is that legal you know present Mike and then midnight would be like I mean sure we said four people we never said they have to be different and so Izuku using his own self, and since, you know, nobody can help him out better than his own self can, he ends up advancing, meaning that three other people who didn't advance would have to be, you know, put in the people who were in like, because I know it was four teams that got in. So we're going to be letting four teams in plus three more. So, yeah, we're going to be having that happen. And then we move on towards the preliminary battles and Izuku versus Shinso would go down, right? Now. Izuku would end up talking towards Shinso. I, I just don't really see a world where Izuku doesn't clap back to Shinso saying that it must be lucky to have been born with such a powerful quirk. You know, Izuku would feel some sort of way, you know what I mean? And he says something back and he's trapped. Izuku was caught off guard and because of the fact that he doesn't have one for all or anything to really break him out, Izuku would have basically begun walking off the edge when suddenly... Izuku's system would override and take control of Izuku's body, blitzing towards the direction of Shinso and completely taking him out easily, right? This would lead Izuku to realize that he is a lot more powerful than he could have ever imagined. He left Shinso in such a mangled state, but he can't focus on that now. All he has to focus on is winning. And so he would have a second battle against Todoroki. Todoroki would start things off immediately with a huge ice barrage attack. And Izuku decides that he's going to start things off with a big bang as well. Grabbing his blade, Izuku would slash at the air. And the slash would cause a wind force so powerful that like once it would slice through the ice and, and like Todoroki would get like caught off guard by this. The wind of it itself would be more than powerful enough to just knock Todoroki back and caused Shotoroki to have to put an ice wall behind him so that he doesn't fall off. But Izuku would blitz in front of him already at that point, and with the dull side of the blade, like, like the hilt, he would bang it on the side of Todoroki's head, and Todoroki would completely collapse. His eyes go to the back of his head, and just white pupils would, would, would be zoomed in on, right? And then Izuku would be proclaimed the winner. Then we have the final match, which would be Izuku versus Tokiyami, seeing as he's not going to be, um, seeing as Baka goes not in a hero course anymore. And so Izuku versus Tokiyami is just a, 
a massacre. Obviously, Tokiomi is pretty powerful. However, Izuku is just on a completely different level. He's already taken out all for one with relative ease. So something like this, I can't even make it interesting. You know what I mean? I can't even handicap Izuku for this. So he wins. And then ultimately, we would have the stain arc go down. Since this time around, Izuku doesn't have one for all. And he kind of just decides that he can really train with whoever he wants. Izuku thinks that it would be a great idea to train with somebody that could probably help him maintain his cool. Somebody like best genus somebody who is on the cool side you know what i mean so he goes with best genus and that's where he does his interview because of this ida does unfortunately get injured just like he would in the original because of stain and stuff like that however izuku just being having the ability of you know finding out about the hosu city incident and ida and all that stuff would kind of take it very hard because it's like first my mother and now my classmates what's next oh my and, you know, he goes to visit Ida in the hospital who would pretty much have been paralyzed from the waist down by Stain because of the fact that he was a fake hero in the eyes of Stain. And seeing as he wasn't an official hero, he let him off easy. Paralyzing him from the legs down is easy in the eyes of Stain, but to everybody else, it's, it's horrible. Ida gets a procedure done on him that would pretty much give him the ability to walk once more. However, it wouldn't be enough. And Ida, unfortunately, would have to resign from being a hero. UA would be under a lot of pressure for the following months. However, Ida's family being able to say that it was really his fault and that he was the one who was responsible for his own actions would let the school continue being a school. And, and eventually, we would have the forest training camp arc in which they would literally just ride smooth. Literally nothing happens. So we then jump into the provisional license arc. And since there's really no stakes and we already know Izuku's going to pass, we're just going to jump over towards the direction of the day when Izuku would end up meeting the big three of UA, Mirio Tagata. When Izuku meets Mirio, he actually likes him a lot and Mirio would offer him to go intern with Naida after seeing just how absolutely powerful Izuku is. By the way, guys, if it sounds like I'm like semi yawning any point during this video, it's because I'm dying. Like it's literally 3 a.m. in the morning when I'm recording this and like I have no energy left, like literally whatsoever. I'm, 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 I'm like on my last few legs. Um, I could, I could genuinely pass out recording this video as I'm speaking. But anyways, though, he goes on the Serenada agency, and once there, Izuku would end up going with Mirio on a patrol. During this patrol, he encounters Overhaul, and because this version of Izuku is just so powerful that he could really take Overhaul out on a whim, he would do so taking out his ability of having hands, and Izuku would revoke that privilege from overhaul, making his quirk completely unusable, and air review him as the hero of heroes, you know what I mean? And that, ladies and gentlemen, would pretty much wrap up what if Izuku hit solo leveling. Towards the beginning, I wanted to really slow down the pace that Izuku had the ability to advance with all his stats. However, once we made it towards the mid, mid, mid range area, it was really, really hard for me to not continue boosting him. Seeing as Izuku having his mother die and that motivation was just, it was just too crazy to nerf. You know what I mean? I really had to go all out with this stuff. So, you know, I did. And ultimately, I do th I do hope you guys enjoyed this series like wholeheartedly. I think that it had a very fair share of ups and downs, but I think that it had its ups mostly. So, if you guys enjoyed today's video, then definitely, definitely, definitely consider smashing that like button, seeing as it'll help the video do a ton better in the algorithm. However, with that being said, it has been your boy Zether, and I am out. Peace.